Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Upland Game Supervisor, Jesse Kohler. Today we're gonna to be talking about the upcoming grouse seasons. First of all, let's talk about sharp tails. How do you come up with your sharp tail numbers? Uh, that's a good question. Each, each spring we go out and we have survey blocks across the state. They're 36, well in general, 36 square miles, so one township blocks. Uh, we go out and we try to census that block, so we count every single lek, every dancing ground where these males traditionally come back to and dance, um, and we're, we're trying to count every male on those dancing grounds, so that should be every adult male as a good index for our population. Okay, last year, uh, obviously, as we all know, summer of 2017 was a dry summer. How are things looking this year compared to last year? Yeah, and that's the unfortunate thing is that our upland bird hunters are going to see low numbers again. Um, the, 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 the hatch last year was terrible and we were already low going into last year. So this spring our sharp tail numbers were down once again. Um, across the state it was down 13%, um, which was even worse in the western part of the state. So we had numbers down as low as 46% in some, some survey areas. Okay, let's explain to our audience uh, why does the drought affect our population so much? Uh, the drought was, was harmful in two ways in the summer. First of all, the, the hens need a lot of water and they're getting most of their water not from going to a stock dam and drinking, but they're getting their water from their food. So when those hens don't get water from their food, when the vegetation, um, the insects are all not hatching, so they're, they're not getting moisture from vegetation or insects, uh, they become de dehydrated and they fail on their second and third nesting attempts. Usually upland birds will nest until they have a successful brood. So if their eggs hatch, then after that they don't have any more nests. So if their eggs fail during the nesting period, during the incubation period, they'll try again up to two more times. And so that second and third attempt, um, if, they're, if, they're not, if they're dehydrated and not in good body condition, they won't have those. those yeah, and this, and this year we went into the spring, summer going pretty dry still, and then we got some rain. Yeah, and this year we had a, a beautiful rebound. It was probably, most people say it was one of the greenest years they've remembered in the recent past. Um, a lot of that for Sharptail is unfortunate. It was because there wasn't a lot of the brown grass standing from 2017. And that residual grass, that brown dead grass from the previous year is most of what they use for their nesting cover. So even though it was a great year for rebounding habitat, we still didn't have the great nesting cover early on in this season. Okay. Um any parts of the state looking better than others? Yeah, the eastern half of the state, you know, normally for sharp-tailed grouse, we're, everybody's asking where to go and we're sending people to the Badlands units up through the prairie potholes and, and looking for places to go um, where we've historically had a lot of sharp tail. This year, I think a lot, a lot better numbers are coming from the east. Our strongest declines were out west, so it's a little bit surprising um, not to be seeing as many out west. Um, unfortunately, we do have two closures in the far eastern part of the state, so our greater prairie chicken population, um, is, there's a population by Grand Forks and a population south on the Cheyenne National Grasslands. And we have closures for sharp-tail hunting in those areas because we don't want hunters to incidentally harvest um, greater prairie chickens. Let's move on to another grouse species that's not hunted by a lot of people, but the rough grouse. Yeah, the ruffed grouse in North Dakota aren't hunted as often as, as others, probably because there aren't as many of them. Um, there are two primary patches of habitat we have in North Dakota. We have the Turtle Mountains in North Central North Dakota and the Pemina Hills in Northeastern North Dakota. Um, in those areas, the ruffed grouse are mainly looking for aspen forests and particularly aspen forests that has modified structures. So some older forests, some younger forests. Um, a mix of aspen age classes. Um, there are some works in progress in the Turtle Mountains that the Game and Fish Department's doing in cooperation with the North Dakota State Forests, and they're, they're working on improving some of those aspen stands. Looks bad at the time, they're chopping down trees, but that's providing different, different heights of different aspen classes in the, in the Turtle Mountains. Um, I don't know if the increases are necessarily a response for that. It's, it's too early to say, and I, I don't think it's probably related, but we have seen slight increases in our rough grouse two years in a row. Okay, let's move on to Hungarian partridge. Uh, our partridge numbers are, yeah, we don't have a lot of surveys specifically tied to partridge. 
just like hunting them when we're out surveying, it's, it's always a bonus to come across partridge. Um, and so for that, our, our numbers are somewhat less reliable because there are fewer, fewer data, data points for partridge. Um, uh, hunters will probably not be going out specifically p for partridge since they're usually harvesting them when they're out hunting pheasants. Um, however, I do think that people who are getting out will probably see more than in the past. We've seen, yeah, anecdotally, like I said, we don't have a lot of good data on partridge numbers, but anecdotally, the groups that we have been seeing have had larger broods, and we're seeing more than what, what we've seen in the past. Okay, there's a uh, program that you guys have, your, your upland crews, about wing envelope surveys. Uh, tell me about that program and why it's so important that uh, hunters submit these envelopes with wings. Yeah, so if hunters are interested in submitting, uh, it depends what species they're hunting. So for a sharp tail, you need a, a, the wing from the joint down, from the elbow joint down, um, and then some feathers from the top of the head. And we use those for determining the sex of the grouse and then the age of the grouse. If it was a chick, um, we want to know the age in weeks. And from that, we can backtrack and determine the peak nesting date or the peak hatch date for most of our chicks in the harvested population. Um, that's important. This year we used that data, for example, for, um, for the discussion we had on emergency haying dates. So for CRP, you can start to hay on August 1st uh, in an emergency situation. And we had discussion on whether or not that date should be moved, and we looked at the number of birds that hatch before, between that July 15th was the potential new date. Between July 15th and August 1st, there were a lot of birds hatching, and so we decided you know, it's better, at least biologically, we should, we should hold off until August 1st to let some more of those birds hatch um, and get old enough to where they can flush before the, before the hayers come through. So. Okay, so much needed information. Um, let's move on to uh, some birds that we haven't had a season for at least probably a decade now. The sage grouse, and you mentioned a little earlier, prairie chickens. How are those birds doing? Yeah, our sage grouse population declined yeah, precipitously from the early 2000s. It was slowly declining over the years, but it always had good peaks where it would come back and, and hang on and do well. Our sage grouse population is on the border of Montana and the, the northern border of South Dakota, so we mostly are relying on their populations to hold ours over in, in bad years. Um, through 2003 to 2008, we experienced really rapid declines, and it was believed, in fact, we found a few instances of West Nile virus and it's assumed that there, was, there were other mortalities due to West Nile virus in that time. We got to a point where the numbers were so low that they, they ceased to have those peaks and troughs and the numbers just stayed low. So we started a project two years ago knowing that our numbers were, were down and assuming that it wasn't only due to habitat conditions, that there was some other factor that dropped them below a uh, threshold where they could no longer reach their peaks and troughs. We decided to translocate sage grouse from Wyoming and bring them up to North Dakota and see if we could bolster both the genetics and also the population to get past that low point in their numbers and hopefully get them to where they could be self-sustaining and, and rebounding again. Um, we've, we've brought up two groups of uh, two separate years of sage grouse and this year is our second year and we're still watching to see what the results are. Jesse, let's talk about prairie chickens. We haven't had a season probably in a decade or more. Uh, how are those numbers doing? You know, our prairie chicken numbers, are, yeah, they're not great in the state. We have two really isolated spots of habitat. We have a, a location west of Grand Forks where there's still some existing tall grass prairie. And then we have an area south by the Cheyenne National Grasslands in the south, both in the eastern part of the state. Um, and that, that population has been holding its own, but it's, it's slowly declining through the years. And that's why we closed the season and we, we're still not seeing any rebound in that population to, to reopen the season. Okay, a lot of good information, Jesse, thank you. Yep. The 2018 North Dakota fall turkey season is set with 3,710 licenses available to hunters, 205 more than last year. This year, in addition to hunting unit 21, Hunting Unit 47 will be closed to fall turkey hunting because of low turkey numbers. However, Unit 53, which has been closed to fall turkey hunting since 2006, will be open in 2018. If you're interested in applying for a 2018 fall turkey license, go to the Game & Fish website at gf.nd.gov and submit an online application. You can also apply by calling the department's toll-free licensing line at 800-406-6409. 
The deadline for applying for a 2018 fall turkey license is Wednesday, September 5th. For Upland Game Supervisor Jesse Kohler and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.